Former United Auto Workers President Gary Jones's conviction, like the convictions of so many other union officials in this years-long investigation, is shameful but hardly surprising. Far from being a situation where a few bad apples spoiled the bunch, it has become painfully obvious that the UAW hierarchy's culture prioritized the forced dues-funded opulence of their limousine lifestyles over accountability to the men and women on the assembly line that union bosses claim to represent. The root of this corruption was compulsion. Federal law gives union bosses the power to force workers under their so-called representation against their will, and in states without right-to-work laws, to force those same workers to subsidize their activities or else be fired. Those dual coercive powers are what put UAW tyrants in a position to begin with that allowed them to sell out rank and file so they could live large. This news, of course, comes after the UAW officials have endorsed Joe Biden for president, who has made it his stated goal to wipe out right-to-work protections in the 27 states where they exist and grant union bosses a whole host of other powers over workers. Union bosses will shower his campaign with union money, including forced dues, in exchange for their promises of expanded coercive privileges. If Biden and the UAW elite get their way, American private sector workers' freedom to withhold money from corrupt union brass will be completely extinguished. The fact is, the expanding UAW corruption scandal shows once again why it's vital that Congress pass the National Right to Work Act to give every worker the freedom to decide for themselves whether a union boss is worthy of their financial support. Joe Biden and other forced union dues proponents ought to explain why they believe tens of thousands of workers in non-right-to-work states should have been fired had they sought to cut off the forced dues being paid to Gary Jones's corrupt UAW.